Hello everybody. Here we're doing the front brakes on a 2007 Nissan Frontier. Um, this is the rotor. This is the calipers holding your pads. And you've got your the two bolts to hold the caliper on. And then you've got two more bolts to hold this framework which holds the pads on. And I noticed the last one I did, these two large bolts are 19 millimeter. We're a little bit stuck so first thing I'm going to do since I've got the tire off is spray those down with some WD-40 as I begin. <laughs> and while that's sitting, then we can begin the rest of the process. Now there's nothing really holding this um, rotor on. So you don't have to worry about any clips or anything like that. The first thing, these are 14 millimeter here. They go into the pins and the pins slide all the way in. So the first thing we're going to do is loosen those up. There's two of them, one up high, one down here. And loosened up. You want to make sure you hold some weight because you don't want this to ever use the weight on the brake line itself. And if you break a brake line, then you'll be replacing more parts. So slide this off. Let's see, it has our pistons. There are two pistons. Make sure any dirt comes out of there. And then. I have this hook that came with my little vacuum kit. I'm going to use that to support the weight of the caliper. <laughs> Let's use that frame. So we got nice loose in there, so that'll support the weight of that. And we can continue on with our work here. Now here we've also got these pins. And these pins will just simply slide out. And do take note, the top one is going to be smooth. The bottom one is going to have, it looks like grooves, but there's actually a piece of rubber. As long as the rubber is still good, you can keep those. I've noticed a lot of people also reuse these little rubber bushings or grommets. Um, the kit I got, I'm going to end up replacing these anyway. But I do take note, this one will be on the bottom, this one will be on top. It's the same both sides. Now this clip, from what I've seen, this is probably the only clip I'll probably use, reuse. I did not notice one come with the, the kit. Pull those, there's two little holes that are in the sides of the pads themselves. So we're going to save those, save that one. And then these ones, these old pads will just pull out. <laughs> Sometimes easier than others. Okay. You can see, obviously I've had these pads in for way too long. And you can also see, this is the, the piece of metal that makes the noise, the squealing noise as it gets down too far. It looks like I've burned off even some of that. So, take note of that, because this will be important later when you put pads on. If you have a particular pad, like I already did the other side first. So this one with the tab goes on the inside of the front rotor. It will not fit on the outside, so I end up having to, that one is on the driver's side. So on this one, we're going to take a look and see if these come off. These ones, for this frame, is a 19 millimeter. <laughs> I'm going to see if that comes loose. Not. Nah. I have to, I might need a breaker bar or something. <clears throat> okay, try my larger one. Mm 
Okay, that seems to be quite tight. I'm now is probably a good time. If you'd like, you can either compress the pistons, um, or for now, I'm probably just going to take a break, let the WD-40 soak in, and then we'll come back to get those loosened up, get that piece off, and pull the whole rotor. Now, if you're not replacing the rotor itself, if your rotor is good, you don't need to go this far. Those can stay in. You would simply replace the clips, which I'll show later, and the pads, and then pretty much a reassembly. But for now, we're going to take a break. I'll probably spray it again, and then we'll come back to this in a few minutes. Okay, so while we're waiting for the WD-40 to set in, another good thing you can do is when you compress the pistons on your caliper, you're going to have more fluid pushed back into a reservoir. And so you, you end up having to take fluid out of this reservoir. I've already done it, but I'm going to show you a couple of quick things that at least I noticed that may help you here. So you want to clean off, definitely because you don't want to get a bunch of dirt and crud into your reservoir. You pull off your cap, and inside there's this Nissan decided they have this nice little screen. You set that aside. Now you, there's either a couple different ways. You can either get some kind of like a turkey baster and one that your wife will never use again because I'm pretty sure she would not like brake fluid on her turkey for next Thanksgiving. Or you have this vacuum pump, which isn't too bad. I think I bought this and this extra container for under $100. And uh, you just want to make sure it's on vacuum. And then you would stick your tube in there and you end up creating your vacuum. Pull out enough. Get it down to about the minimum mark on your reservoir. And that should be enough for probably at least two tires worth of brakes. So once you pull that out, then you can go back, compress your pistons, and it'll push up any fluid in here. And if you want, You'll have to top off with some nice, clean, fresh brake fluid. And then, eventually, you'll have to top off as needed because the pistons are going to push out further than what's actually necessary or stock. So when you end up putting your pads back on, the pistons are actually going to push further in on the pads, which you're going to lose a little bit of fluid here also. You just want to make sure you don't get below minimum because then you have run the risk of getting air into your brake lines. And then you'll have to go through the entire process of doing uh, brake fluid bleed which I'll be doing that some other time. I can do that right now. So this is just changing the brakes. But this is something you can do while you're waiting for like those uh, two bolts to loosen up. So let's get back and check those two bolts. 